So, I couldn't get the other tree to be to work. I tried the fuses and the light. And I ordered a new tree. Just got here. It's not yet December 1st, so I feel like I have plenty of time. Yeah, so I'm going to put this up. All right, here's my tree all set up. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. So I thought, for the curious, this is the brand I got. It's Kirk Adler. I feel like it is, it's a seven foot tree. I feel like it's rather idiot proof because it has these like, I don't know if you can see, but like right in here, see this disc that has prongs that I was first like, those look dangerous, but actually that disc um, keeps the branches from bending lower than they're supposed to. So it's really idiot proof, <laughs> I think. And it's in three pieces, just like my other one. Um, and it's much nicer than my other one. It The um, branches have really nice, um, soft, a soft feel to them. And I don't think it's shedding the way my other one did. It has a slight sort of like plasticky scent but generally, it's a really nice tree. I'm super happy with it. Um, I think I need to just unbend some, a few more branches, but generally, yeah, I'll show you decorating it later on this week. December project in mind and the yarn just arrived. I have ordered from Loopy Mango um, their dream tweed and some dream yarn. Um, if you've been around a little while, a few, two years or more, you'll know that I use this yarn to knit some Christmas stockings and I have actually I've got three Christmas patterns Christmas stocking patterns um, of varying degree of difficulty 
that are published and available on Ravelry or by emailing me. So I, I bought blue as well. Um, and <laughs> uh, so I will be uh, casting on, I'll be knitting two new stockings. I have a bunch of, I have enough, almost enough red in stash to make a stocking. So this is actually going to be used for three different stockings. So this will be one I picked. Um, I, I want to make a stocking for my son's father-in-law, whose house I'm, I'll be staying at when I go to Texas for the holidays. Um, because he does not have one of my hand-knit stockings. I only made them for my son, his wife, my daughter-in-law, and uh, my granddaughter. Um, I'll be bringing mine, of course. <laughs> so I thought I would make him one. And I chose this like tweed with golden green in it. And I think I have some yarn in my stash that would make a nice... Um, that I'll in green that I'll use as a um, for the motif, and I'm not sure which motif I'm going to make yet. I'm thinking it's going to be the snowflake pattern, which is in Christmas stockings too, um, and the blue for the blue is just going to be another stocking for me. Um, so it turns out my youngest son is now happily partnered, and I don't have he wants to include her in family events, and I do not have a stocking for her here. Um, so I'm going to use this blue to make another stocking, and I'm also going to use this one red skein to make a red stocking. So I'm going to make two more stockings for myself just to have one backup in case something changes or, it, you know, something along those lines. And then the, this stocking will go to, to my son's father-in-law, my daughter-in-law's father, um, for him to use on the regular um, for the next however long he's with us. Um, he's not ill or anything, so it'll be a long, long time. But yeah, that is my plan. So I'll be sharing with you the progress of um, knitting these stockings. I'm probably not going to start these until I may have something by by uh, vlog two. I won't have anything for vlog one, I don't think. But yeah, just wanted to share that the yarn just arrived. So I'm super excited. I thought I'd give you an update on my sock project for my <laughs> kids and their partners. Um, so I didn't do, I ended up falling off the wagon with the challenge that I was going to give myself to do, to knit a pair over Thanksgiving weekend. Um, but I did finish these, uh, hedgehog fiber, um, socks. And if you're new here, this is the DRK everyday, uh, no, sorry, DRK. It's the Andrea Mowry bear paw sock pattern modified. Um, and knit on a smaller needle. So I use three millimeter needles or US size two and a half to get a little bit tighter fabric. And that means I have to cast on a different amount of stitches in the pattern. Um, I have all the notes about it on, um, if you scroll back and look at some of my sock patterns, you'll see, I think I write the cast on amount in every project page on Ravelry so you could see um, what that meant. Um, this is a cast on, a US um, woman's size eight shoe, casting on 40, sorry, 20 stitches to get to 40 stitches around, or in the round here. And then doing all the modifications for the heel and all that. So yeah, I did finish these. I finished um, the second sock on Monday, or sorry, Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. And I cast on, and today's Tuesday after Thanksgiving, it's the 28th, I think, 28th, yes. And I cast on a pair for my son, uh, for one of my sons. This is, um, and I'm through the heel. So I just finished the heel, I'm on the leg. So I'm doing pretty good. It turns out if you just knit socks and don't get distracted by other projects, you can knit them pretty fast. <laughs> um, this yarn is, <clears throat> sorry, um, Black Sheep Knitworks. Um, it's a yarn shop in East Hampton, New York, and this was some of their own indie dyed. Um, it is a superwash merino silk and yak blend, DK weight. It's really gorgeous. These are probably the most elegant socks I've ever made. <laughs> like, the, I guess the two by two rib makes it a little more 
rustic. So, um, and this sock size is for a men's size eight and a half shoe. And I cast on 22 stitches to get to 44 in the round um, for him. And those fit him really, really well. This is um, the third or fourth pair of socks that I've made for him. He loves hand knit socks, so I'm happy to, very knit worthy, I'm happy to give him some. They all do, actually, all the, the boys um, and the partners. That's where I'm at with my sock project. Mm -hmm. before now I had intended to do it all week but I just never got around to it so I wanted to just do that quickly now before I open them um, so this thing here this <laughs> has the 24 days on it ending at 24 down there um, and I just have it hanging from a door hanger on one of my closet doors and um, I don't have a yarn advent this year actually that's not wholly true I do have a yarn 12-day yarn advent that's coming um, there was a supply chain issue I got the one from Ching fiber if any of you also did um, and she said the countdown will be to us in time to do um, from day 14 so anyway what you're seeing here is my six day fiber countdown from Green Goat Ranch. And uh, I'm gonna open day one today. I don't know how I'm gonna open these. Um, I might, I don't know, I'll figure it out. But I'm definitely doing this one today. So I'm gonna grab that. The other advents, the other advents I have are over here under the tree. I did get a 24 day gin advent. And I got a, um, hopefully you can see that. It's so dark. It says, <laughs> hold on, let me pull it out. I got a candy one because, you know, who doesn't like a little sweet treat? So this is Wally Wiz. It's a Danish company, I think, or Wally and Wiz, I believe. Um, and it's all, uh, 
I don't know, like their specialty stuff, not, I, I actually don't really know what it is. It just sounded good. It's all um, not chocolate, which um, I, I do love chocolate, but I also really love like citrus. So I'm hoping that there's some like citrus and fruity flavors in there, but we'll see. Jesus Christ, her little child. Happy Vlogmas 1! Um, today is December 1st, Friday, December 1st, and yeah, I have a little bit I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a little bit of knitting update right now, because um, I think you saw some clips and stuff of things of my lead up to the holidays, or you're going to, I'm not sure in editing how all of this is going to fit together, but I'm sure it will. Um, let me just do a quick welcome. My name is Shannon. Welcome to Vlogmas. I love this time of year. It is so much fun. I cannot believe it is December 1st already. And yeah, so that stuff is just happening like crazy. Um, yeah, so let me show you, do some quick knitting. I believe I already have showed you. I want to just chat a little bit about my um, Woolen and Nosh uh, self-striping 20, uh, Advent 2023 that um, you knit a stripe a day is the idea. So there are 24 stripes, you knit a stripe a day. Um, I have now done both, um, <laughs> both socks. So I'm doing two at a time. Um, but I'm using flexi flips. I like the flexi flips better than magic loop. I never get those, you know, rungs that you get with magic loop and um, they're certainly easier than double points. Um, but yeah, so this is, let me, let me actually here, let me use this one to show you up close and the idea, so the, I think I went over this already. So you're meant to stop when you reach the, there's this neutral color that matches the cuff that uh, when you get to it, you stop so that you don't spoil um, the next color for the next day. Um, so, and this little thing is just showing me uh, beginning of the row. It's just marking my beginning of the row so I don't get confused. But yeah, that is the sock so far. This is a pattern provided by um, Woolen and Nosh, part of the advent. It's called Peace and Joy and you get uh, a download or you know 
I got it downloaded this morning. <laughs> so, and it, it looks like it's um, alternating rows of like texture stitches and um, then a, alternating with a plain knit round. And our first stripe is a navy blue. The funny thing about this though, and you know, I, I think I'm okay. Um, one, sorry, just dropped a needle. <laughs> one sock, I was able to go an extra row. Like you can see, like this one, this one I already, the back side of the sock I knit with the contrasting color and this one, so I think I have a full round, an extra full round on this one. And I also started the pattern one round later. So I have an extra round of contrast color at the beginning of this sock. I, you know, it's hand dyed. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's gonna work itself out somewhere else down the, down the striping. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. So I ended up doing an extra round here that I couldn't do here because I'm getting dangerously close to the next color. Um, but anyway, we'll see. I'll continue to share this with you daily, the daily stripe update. Um, by the way, like if you're new here and you didn't haven't watched any Vlogmases before um, of mine, I do weekly. So, but I do take clips during the week um, showing you my Christmas related shenanigans. And uh, I think there's going to be plenty this year, this this season for me, um, because mostly because of where I live. I live uh, I live in New Jersey, right across the Hudson River from New York City, and um, so I'm planning to go to New York City next week to see some of the sites, and I'll take you along. And um, t this weekend, today actually, so I'm kind of trying to rush because I have a one o'clock meeting. It's the middle of the day right now, it's my lunch hour. Um, and I have a one o'clock meeting and then immediately after that, I'm driving out to the Hamptons, which is something that I do the first weekend of December every year, except the pandemic year. I did not do it that year, but all the other years I've um, taken, I take that weekend trip and spend it with my friend and we do shopping and you know relaxing and all these Christmassy things. and. I'm excited because I think it's the first year that since I've been doing Vlogmas that it's not gonna rain tomorrow. It's supposed to be pretty nice, maybe breezy. It's supposed to rain tonight and then rain on Sunday. So we'll see, Sunday will be very quiet, but tomorrow we, we have a lot planned. Um, so yeah, so I'll be sharing all of that with you. All right, so that's my update on Woolens and Nosh. Um, my current cast-ons, just to, for continuity's sake, um, they're, Crescendo, <laughs> I got the pronunciation, the more common pronunciation, Crescendo, blouse by uh, the Knit Pro Girl. Um, I'm cruising along on it. I've split for the sleeves and I've got about maybe five inches um, past the sleeves. I think I knit to about, the pattern actually calls for you to make it, I think it's an older pattern, and calls for you to make it fairly long. Like I think it's around 14 inches from the, armhole and that's much longer than what I normally do. I normally do somewhere in, well, 14, including the rib. I think it's 14 before you do the rib. So um, 12 is probably more or less where I usually land. Like I like my sweaters to be somewhere in that 21 to 24 inch length total from the neck, from up here, from this point at the neck band down to the bottom. And I think I have about a nine, nine inch yoke here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the update. I love this yoke so, so much. I have a, um, I'll show you later. I have a, I have a plan to do another one for my granddaughter, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that when I get to, to towards the end. Um, I was able to fit the entire, uh, the entirety of three motifs. I misread the pattern when I talked about this in my last episode. Um, I thought that the smallest size, I'm knitting the smallest size because my, I couldn't get gauge. And even though I went down two needle sizes, I still didn't get gauged, so I just stopped because I was like, that's nice fabric, I'm gonna stop there. And then just knit the smallest size so that I get my size. I think I'm gonna end up with like a 46 inch finish bust, which is gonna give me like six, seven inches of ease, so that's fine. Um, anyway, I was able to fit all three diamonds. There are four in the pattern, depending on which size you make and what your gauge is. Um, but it seemed like the majority of the people either did two 
two, two and a half to three, three and a half even. Um, and I really wanted, I like, I love the look of three motifs. So it's the, these diamonds here, one, two, three. So pretty, right? This is going to be nice, nice and cozy, nice cozy sweater. Um, and yeah, what else can I tell you? Yarn wise, just to recap, I am using Labiname Kumo. It's her Surrey lace um, yarn, Surrey silk. And I am using some, this is stash that I've had quite a while. It's funny. I'm using Olan. I'm saying it's funny. Um, and it's the color Obelisk. It's funny because she's closed yet again. So she's having her third baby. I don't know if you caught the news. Um, so she's closed yet again. And uh, she'll probably be back, I, I, I think. I think she's just trying to, she's struggling with work-life balance. She's She's not, you know... She's young, so she's still trying to figure sh sh her stuff out. <laughs> I was about to curse, but I know I know this is a safe space, but, you know, sometimes, you know, there are words that work just as well. <laughs> curse words. So, okay, that's the Crescendo Blouse by Knit Pearl Girl. Um, my uh, my uh, Stripey Unicorn by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I've also split for the sleeves. It's going a little slower because this is, um, because that one crescendo, I'm holding two strands together. Um, so it's acting more like a DK. Um, this one is definitely, it's a sport weight technically, but it's a slower knit. So, oh, did I drop stitches? I did. Yikes. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's moving along. I like it. I guess I am, I am less, motivated to work on this. Um, it'll get done. I'm not sure it'll be done before the end of the year, but it'll get done. Um, I have been, as usual, for December, sidetracked by gift knitting. <laughs> Some of which you've seen already or will see. Um, not much progress on my, oh, Hohi Locatelli's, I'm using Spin Cycle, Deep Bump, and I'm using um, Le Garçon's British Sport and Edith, Edith's Butler. All the stuff, if I skip anything, because I'm trying to go so fast so I don't miss my meeting, um, it'll all be in the description box. Um, I have not made much progress on my second uh, Rumble Raglan where, where that I'm making with mini skeins. Let's see, I'm trying to, well, it doesn't matter. This is the side, this is actually on a sleeve. Um, and. You know, it's not for not wanting it done. It's more for just like, it's requiring a lot of thought um, because I'm technically knitting the two color. Here, let me just put it like this so you can see. Technically knitting the two color and the two color in the pattern, she doesn't give you any directions about when to switch up your colors because you're meant to do this like, two by two color work and then switch it up from time to time. So you could see I did that here, right there, where you switch what which one is going so that you get these like broken columns. It's really genius, simple, genius for its simplicity, but also effectiveness, which I really, really love when uh, patterns are like that or even art is like that. I just really love that. Um, so, I have kind of devised my own, um, it'll move faster once I get through a full repeat. I did stop using the green and I switched to my second color, which is this like speckled mini skein. I don't know where the, all the mini skeins are from. I just keep a big, I have a jar of, um, you know, sort of assorted mini skeins, mini skeins that aren't in a set per se or just dumped into a big jar and then I pull uh, skeins out when I need them. Um, so to recap, I am using a uh, <laughs> bunch of blue and green mini skeins. Oh, I also, like, I neglected to say this about the pattern last time, but um, Lydia Morrow, the pattern's by Lydia Morrow, Ramble, Rumble, Ramble Raglan by Lydia Morrow, she charted, she charted the increases and that you do for the raglan and I love it. It's perfect for me. Cause I, you know, I'm, I, when I see a lot of text in a pattern, I'm just like, oh gosh, 
just tell me what I'm supposed to do. Like, just bullet point it or something. And in a chart, I'm just going to flash it quickly so you can see what I mean. But, like, this is the chart. Because <laughs> it's a paid-for pattern, and I don't want to uh, give away her intellectual property. But um, I was really wishing that Hohi Locatelli's... Um, Stripey Unicorn had been charted because I think it would have been easier for me to um, understand. I don't... What the heck was that? Did you see that? I don't know if that was there for you too, but all of a sudden there were some fireworks and I don't know why. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> My computer's doing things without me. Um, the main color I'm using is I guess hey, my computer's happy it's vlogmas. <laughs> uh, my main color is a hand spun that I made from fiber that Olan Fiber Company made. And, uh, or a while back, like she did a fiber club when she learned how to spin. And yeah, it's really pretty. It's just really pretty. I ended up with just one skein. I think it was 125 grams and it's a camel blend like there's camel in it and a lot of sparkle like 20% sparkle and then I think the rest is merino if I'm not mistaken but it's really nice and soft and squishy and very very sparkly which I think you can see right there and it kind of does like I call it I called it like a canyon color because it sort of reminds me of like if you ever see pictures of the Grand Canyon from like down on the bottom it's it's these colors <laughs> uh, okay, cool. That's that. I wonder if I said something, if something I said made it, because it wasn't a particular time like that. That was, that was so funny. One last thing to show you. One last knit to show you. Um, I think I showed you, maybe put a clip in, or I will do it now if I didn't of my um, granddaughter, one of, a gift for my granddaughter. I am knitting her yet another anchor sweater. And it is by Petite Knit. Petite Knits? Petite Knits. I think there's an S. Yes, yes, Petite Knits. Um, and I've made it, uh, as I said, that this is my third time. Each time I make it, I make the next biggest size for her. Um, and, in, and this one, it's a DK weight sweater. And I'm in, on the rib, so I'm almost done. I'll be ready to cast off later today. Um, just a few more rows. I was hoping to get it done before I recorded, but alas, busy morning. <laughs> um, I am holding two fingering weight skeins together. The, and these are more deep stash that I got from Garn Story. This was, I believe it was Garn Story's very first club because she called the colors, I think this one here and this one is surprise color one. And then this one, this other one is surprise color six. And it was interesting when they were skeined up, they looked very similar in terms of their colors. And I thought they'd work great together. Um, and then when I caked them, I could see that the way she applied the color was quite different. So this one's more variegated than this one. This one has like long stretches of the purple and long stretches of the green with, or turquoise with speckling on top, where this one is just more like those colors all over the yarn. Um, so the, the segments are shorter. But I actually think they're working really well together. And um, I, the pattern I believe said I would need somewhere in the range of 600 yards for the size I'm making. I'm making the three to four and you knit it on a size six needle. Um, so it goes pretty fast. I actually have another skein of this. So if these two don't get me through the sleeves, I'll be surprised if they do. I think I'm gonna be a little short. Um, I will, so 600 yards, I had I had four skeins that were 400 yards each, so 1,200 yards held double, 600 yards, that was my 600 yards. Um, it doesn't seem like I'm gonna use the um, full 600 yards. It looks like it's gonna be more like maybe 500, uh, since, I mean, I really thought I'd use these up knitting the body, but 
I did not, and I don't have much more to go. So, um, and my thought was holding this color double is just gonna look a little darker than probably what I get with this marling, and that would be fine on the sleeves. So I'll have to sort of play it by ear when I'm starting to knit the sleeves. Um, I might do two at a time just so I can make sure they stay even in terms of the way they look. Um, but yeah, almost done. I cast this on like, I don't even know, three days ago. <laughs> very fast knit. <laughs> These knitting for little guys, you know, very, very fast knit. Um, so I have uh, presented myself with a couple challenges, which I think you're going to watch a clip of um, some like moments where I was like this past week, like, oh crap. Yeah, I probably need to do that. Um, but because this is going so fast and honestly like the the other three sweaters that i'm knitting could be done whenever like i don't feel pressured to get those done necessarily i'm just gonna allow myself to follow my whims my and do what i like i am going to make my granddaughter a crescendo blouse using the anchor sweater pattern sort of hacking. I'm going to do a hack, like a, a mashup of the anchor pattern, but I'm going to do the crescendo diamonds. And I've already looked at it a bit, looked at the pattern and figured out how many stitches or how many repeats I'll have of the um, diamond around, like how big do I need it to be? It's interesting because the anchor sweater has you do increases in between those rib. I have a visual cue. Why aren't I using it? Um, so the anchor sweater has you do increases in between these rib, each rib section, and the crescendo, you know, there are moments within each diamond where you do increases, and the and they kind of line up with where these happen, so I, I think it's going to be fine. I think what I'll have to do is just pay attention to to how many stitches I'm increasing around, because this one has you do pretty, pretty significant increases so I'm just gonna have to always make sure whatever the increases I do are divisible by the number of diamonds um, that I have so it'll probably be a bit of a fudgy mess but I'm kind of looking forward to it I think I'm definitely looking forward to it so as soon as I get this sweater done probably sometime next week I'm gonna cast on this because I started to when I started to think about this, I mean, this is the fun part of knitting for me, besides actually the soothing part is the, doing the work, unless you're doing like a really hair raising, heavy charted pattern, like that dragon I made a couple years ago. Um, the fun part for me is planning. So and like going through, digging through my stash and looking. So I uh, was just looking on my Ravelry stash pages and I'm like, oh, I think I might have some yarn that would be good for this. So I have two skeins of this. This is more Surrey lace from, but this is from a different company. It's from Lavender Loon and I've had it in my stash for some time. Um, so I have two colors. It's the colorway Tinder and it is 74% uh, Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry silk lace, um, 328 yards. Standard, just like the Kumo, really. Um, maybe it may be a wee bit thinner, I'm not sure. Um, so I had caked one a while back. I think I was thinking I was going to use it for something, and I ended up not using it, so it went back in my stash. So I do have two. And then this yarn. This is more Garn Story. I think this is another, I don't have the tags anymore, but I could see on my Ravelry. I believe this were, I, this was another Surprise Club color. So these two colors are the same, and you can see like, you know, per as per Indy dyed, they're not exactly the same, but they are, you know, close enough. And I think knitting with the Surrey held double, it's gonna work out just fine. But I was just like, oh, these really work. Look at them. I was a little bit concerned when I was looking at them on my Ravelry that they were maybe a little bit too white for a kid sweater. Like, who wants a white kid sweater? It's going to just be a mess to clean. Um, think always trying to think practically, for especially because it's a gift. But I actually think it's fine. It's going to end up being a pretty lavender shade um, overall. And then you'll see, like, bits of these other colors. So I think it's going to be pretty nice. 
Um, and I have 600 yards and 600 yards probably won't need that much, but I have it. So I should be able to get through it and i um, very excited to use that more stash. So um, I am gonna leave you here and there's probably gonna be other clips after this that will be maybe a couple follow-up Christmassy things. Um, but overall, um, you can look forward to more Christmas content and more, you know, this similar format where it's a lot of like Christmas everyday things that I'm sharing and um, all of that. Oh, and I wanted to say, I don't know if you caught it in the, or maybe I put it, I'll put it in when I edit the candy that I opened. I have to give you more info about that, um, where, which I don't have at the moment. But um, the candy that I opened is quince and lime flavored. So I was like, ooh, I haven't had it yet. I haven't tried it yet, but I am gonna take it with me um, to uh, on my, for my drive, because it's a long drive um, on a Friday afternoon. It's a long drive. It's usually like about two and a half to three hours, um, but it's gonna be like over three, I think, this afternoon. So I wish I didn't have this meeting. I would be on my way already. All right. Hope you're well, hope you're enjoying the holiday season and let me know down in the comments what you're up to, what you're up to this this holiday weekend or it's not really a holiday weekend, but this holiday season, I should say. Take care. So I mentioned before that I have a plan for a white and black sweater that I want to be my New Year's Eve cast on. And, I, you know, like I do, I was just dreaming about future cast-ons. I mean, I have plenty of knitting right now. Um, but I thought it would be fun to cast this on for the new year and to have it be my first sweater of 2024. So um, these are the Green Mountain Spinnery yarns that I've had in my stash for a long, long time. Um, I have both natural white and natural black. And uh, what caught my eye was this book by uh, Marianne Isaiah. Isaiah, I think is the way you say it. It's, she's a Danish designer. She's um, been around a long time and she wrote this book called A Knitting Life. Back to, I'm not sure what that, how to pronounce that, Versted, Versted. I'm not sure. Anyway, this book came out last year. I'm going to show you a little bit of it. It's gorgeous. It has all of this beautiful um, scenery and knitwear um, in it. Lots and lots of knitting patterns, but it's also just her history, the history of her life. That one's really cool. Um, she was mostly designing, I think, in the 70s and 80s, and um, she's the, you know, I don't know her whole life story, but um, I know she's been around for a long time. She talks about the 80s and establishing the business. I really love this pattern. But the, so the sweater that I actually want to make with this yarn, let's see if I can find it. It's called Scottish Check. Getting a little preview. There's a lot of gorgeous, gorgeous patterns in here. I really like that one. This is, there's a summer pattern. Um, hold on. So this has her life story as well as patterns. Oh, that one's really cool. It's called Scottish Check. Here it is. Okay, so this is the one that I want to make. I just looked at the pattern and I realized that, um, so I have a fingering weight. I have about 14, a little over 1400 yards of this color and I have about 700 yards of this color. This is made from <laughs> A lace weight, the black is a waist weight, lace weight, waist weight. <laughs> the black is a lace weight and the white is a DK held with a strand of silk moment. Here's another picture. So I was like, well, crap, I have fingering weight. Um, 
Uh, there's a couple things I could do. So it turns out actually what I was reading as black is kind of a toasty brown. I do have some lace weight that is like charcoal. And I have, it's a cashmere lace though. And I, I could hold, I have enough of this so I could hold this double. So I actually just, I flipped to the pattern, which I'm gonna show you now. That's the whole sweater. And I had to do math because the pattern is, she doesn't give the yardage, she only gives the um, grams. So I would either make the second or third size. I have to figure it out. Um, I need to do a gauge swatch too. So I can see that color A, this is the black, it only needs, um, 560 yards for the second size and somewhere in between that for the third size, I'm guessing around 600 yards. So I think I'm fine with this yarn if I can make this work in lieu of a lace weight. And this is a pretty fine fingering weight. So I think I'll be okay with that. Um, and then the white is the DK and I need um, 550 yards of the white and then the mohair, silk mohair is another total 696 yards, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around that 550 yards mark. Um, so it would, then what it would mean for me is I'm holding this double and I'm adding a strand of silk mohair. And remember like, I'm trying to use up stash, so I'm really not interested in having to go purchase these yarns per se. So I went digging in my stash and I do actually have some silk mohair <laughs> that is also white. So I think this will work out pretty well. Um, this is about 400 yards and then I have a further 200 yards of this, which we'll just have to do. So this will be like, this right here is 600 yards. So I think that'll work. And then if I wanted to stick with lace, I do have this Veronita from Ching. Um, in a charcoal color, I have about 600 yards of it. So um, I actually think I might have more than that. I think I have a total, I have two two color lots. One is like 800 yards, I think, and the other one is 600 or something like that. I have a, a lot, but I, I prefer this. I don't want an all over fluffy sweater. So I think this is what I'm gonna do the ching away, save that for another project and just use this right here um, and try to make it work. So I do need to swatch at some point over this Christmas season um, so that I'm prepped for this New Year's Eve cast on or New Year's Day cast on. Anyway, that's what I am, that's what I've been up to with my crafting.